Welcome to the review of the Suzuki Grand Vitara. Now this is the biggest and most expensive Suzuki that they sell. Um, well more specifically this edition because this is the Grand Vitara All Grip Hybrid. And to get into this you're going to be looking at spending 542,000 Rand. Now people are thinking oh that's so damn expensive for a Suzuki and I'll be like yes it is but you need to understand what you're getting with this Grand Vitara. Now it does come feature packed um, which I'll get into but let me just start off with what's powering the Suzuki as well as the entire Grand Vitara range and that's a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder engine and it's the engine that's in almost all other Suzuki's it's their bread and butter one that's because it's reliable and it's solid it's not very powerful um, now that's probably this car's biggest downfall is that it is severely underpowered um, that engine puts out 76 kilowatts and 137 newton meters of torque but that's only in this higher spec all grip hybrid model but if you go into a lower spec that's not a hybrid you get more power yeah um, but only one more of each so if you get into any of the entry levels or the GLX or anything like that you're then going to get 138 newton meters of torque and 77 kilowatts more power <laughs> but speaking more about the electric system in this hybrid model so yes it's got an electric motor as well as a battery that self charges but in this car it's there to kind of take the load off of the engine it's there to help the car run a lot more efficiently so when the engine turns off for your start stops and stuff like that other parts of the car will still keep running um, it also helps the engine run a lot more smoothly people don't know how to do a four-way stop um, it also helps the engine run a lot smoothly when you're cruising and give you a little bit more punch when you do pull off the line but that being said it is supposed to be more fuel efficient but I haven't managed to see that yet so Suzuki do claim 5.6 liters per 100 Ks on this model but I'm currently getting 7.5 yeah so it's very far off from the claim numbers now I haven't been doing a lot of highway speeds but I do believe that if you do then you might get a little bit closer to those numbers um, us at the content revolution which I'll link down in the description below we did a video where we drove the cars out to Mpumalanga we did highway distances and speeds and things like that and we did manage to get the fuel consumption down to like the high sixes uh, no to the low sixes and the high fives but with me and how I'm currently driving here I'm not getting it I'm driving through the neighborhoods I'm driving around the city I am doing what a normal person would do from the day to day driving to work the school run things like that and I'm getting 7.5 and it's not getting lower at all now that also just could come down to the fact that this car is obviously big and because of the system that's in here there's added weight as well so that additional electric motor the additional batteries all of that is just adding weight to this car which I don't think is working in its favor and I think another big reason as to why the fuel consumption is not that great in this car is because yes it's underpowered which means you're constantly needing to wring this car's neck just to get some sort of power out of it so that you can you know either overtake or do an uphill on the highway or that sort of thing but once you've driven it for a while you then get used to how it drives and how you need to prepare yourself for certain things like uphills and overtakes and that sort of thing so you eventually get used to being in a certain rev range so that you can drive in normal driving situations without having to always be at the high rpms which is pretty sucky so yeah um but otherwise it's a very very comfortable car to drive the suspension is not too hard so like i know it's a bit of an off-roader so the suspension would come across as quite firm but it's actually in between it's quite soft it handles the bumps nicely um it doesn't feel super stiff either so yeah i think it's a really good car i mean it's very comfortable to drive i wouldn't put any black marks against that so yeah well done suzuki okay now as i said earlier this car is feature packed so for the price that you're paying i don't think that's actually too bad so you are as i've mentioned getting a very big car so there's a lot of space here 
you're getting a lot of ground clearance and you're getting some seriously good looks. I do think that this Grand Vitara is a good looking SUV in this mid-size SUV segment. Um, you'll find that it looks like another car on the road made by Toyota. Well, actually that Toyota's kind of made by Suzuki, but rebranded and that sort of thing. Doesn't matter. But yeah, from a feature-packed point of view in this all grip hybrid model or what else or what you would get similar in the glx because they're the same spec um, but in here you'll find a nine inch uh, touchscreen infotainment that comes with wireless apple carplay and android auto and all of that so yes it's wireless no need for phone cables and irritating things like that and then right in front of the driver you do get a heads up display which is quite cool it's very iron man-esque because it like it pops up and it raises and you can change the things that you want to see on it which i think is quite cool in a segments of car of this nature um, and then yeah you're also getting wireless phone charging you're getting in this particular all group model you're also getting different drive modes so depending on what surface you're driving on whether it's some dirt or if you want sport mode and things like that so you do have the ability to change that on the fly down here in the middle but one of my favorite features that you do get on this car is its 360 camera system yeah it's a full 360 camera system you can see around the car consistently you can choose what angles you want to see. You can even go as close as honing in on one specific wheel. So if you're kind of stuck in traffic and you're getting close to the curb on the side, you can look at that wheel alone to see if you're missing the curb. And that's, it's a breeze to work. Um, it comes in handy all the time and I absolutely love it. And another big feature is this. So it is a huge panoramic sunroof. I'm not going to open it now because I made that mistake earlier when I had the car and it opened while it was raining and it, you'll see it on screen now when I put it there but anyway it opens so it opens really wide it's probably one of the biggest openings of a panoramic sunroof that I've seen in a car in a very long time so yeah that's another one of my favorite things here another one of the main differences between this high spec or highest spec all grip hybrid model as opposed to the entry levels and the GLX and things like that is you are getting a six-speed automatic transmission now this comes specifically with this model car here um, otherwise the rest of the range you get the option of choosing a four-speed auto or a five-speed manual now personally for me i would take okay actually let me take this high spec one aside if i was going to be getting the entry levels the gl the glx's and i had to choose between the four-speed auto or the five-speed manual it's all depending on how you drive and what sort of driving scenarios you're in. So if you are doing the casual drive around the city, doing the school run, going to work, you don't need to do a lot of highway driving, then I would take the auto. It's going to suit you and work perfectly. But if you are on, a, on the open road um, and you do a little bit of you know town driving and stuff like that, I would then use the five-speed automatic, uh, five-speed auto. I would use the five-speed manual because you're obviously able to get additional gear ratios you can bring the engine revs down a bit more and you can kind of conserve a little bit more fuel but if i had to choose a transmission for me i would go with the five speed manual um, because this is the only one that's got a six speed it's really good but you can only get it on the top spec model some other cool features that come with the grand vitara is you do get a push button start you've got keyless entry you've got a really cool looking um little key block <laughs> which i think is quite cool as well as a full leather steering wheel yeah the people at suzuki believe that the connection between the driver and the car sits at the steering wheel and yeah i think i love them for that every version of the grand vitara you buy will have a leather steering wheel regardless of what if it's the entry level or not um, and i think that that's a, a good move from them because that other brand that sells the same looking car they don't do this but I think it's time we do a quick little deep dive and we go look and see around the whole interior to see what it has to offer. I'll show you all the bits and pieces as well as take a look at the outside of the car and show you why this car really stands out on the road. In my opinion, I think it looks amazing. So here it is, the Suzuki Grand Vitara in opulent red. And opulent fits it perfectly because I think this car is brilliant. It is opulent and it looks incredible. So up front, you'll see you've got that familiar new grille, which is also kind of similar to what you get on the fronks i do love the new design language that suzuki is using you've got those modern led daytime running lights up top and those huge headlamps that sit just underneath there 
but you can see it's been built for off-roading or to at least be an SUV because you do have the plastic cladding that go over the wheel arches. You've got all that ground clearance and as you move your way down the side, you've got some really nice silver detailing that sits on the roof rails and on that C pillar, but the roof rails are silver only on the top end models. So not on the others, so just bear that in mind. And as you make your way around the back of the car, you'll see the LED rear tail light strip, which I think makes the car look very modern. And I really like how they've put the lights on either side of the sides of the bumpers to give the car extra width. And that's gonna house your other lights as well as your reflectors. But overall, a very, very good looking mid-size SUV from a design point of view. Okay, let's look inside. And here on the inside, you'll find a very modern, simple and clean design. Actually something very similar to all the other cars that you find in the Suzuki range, specifically the Bellino and the Franks. You'll recognize that dashboard and the whole layout there. But yeah, on this model, you can see that you've got a full leather interior. And as mentioned earlier, you do have a full leather steering wheel with all the controls that you need for your infotainment and your cruise control. And on the high spec models, you get a nine inch infotainment as opposed to a seven inch where you get wireless Apple CarPlay. You also get a digital climate control, so not just a standard aircon, which is quite nice. And underneath that, you'll find a wireless phone charger as well as the six speed automatic transmission and the drive selector that all come standard in the hybrid all grip model. And then looking at the storage around the cabin, you'll find a pretty good size cubby hole as well as some storage in the doors which is also big enough for a big water bottle and in the center you've got an armrest that opens up and slides forward and backwards and that's super comfortable when you're driving don't take that for granted and then looking at the rear you'll see that your passengers also have some aircon vents but that's fed from the aircon in the front as well as two usb slots and as you can see here some quite decent legroom and a very comfortable space to be on long road trips but looking more at the legroom, this is me sitting in the back here and you can see I do have space here in front of my knees. That is in my driving position, which is normally quite further back than someone normal. And yeah, my head is almost just touching the roof, but overall, not too bad. Space in front there, pretty good. So while the Grand Vitara is really grand in my eyes, there's a lot to love about it. But there's obviously a few things that I'm not a major fan of. And the first thing is going to be the heads up display. And all of this is in no particular order. I'm just mentioning it. The heads up display, while how cool and fancy it is, you can't adjust the angle at which you view the screen in front here. So when it, once it pops up, that's what you see. Now for me who's tall, I half the writing gets cut off i can't see what it's saying i always have to duck down to look and if i'm doing that i might as well look down at the speedometer um, so that's one of the things i don't like the second thing for me is going to be the central locking so yes it has central locking but it doesn't have the drive off feature where the car will lock automatically that you have to do by yourself and living in Joburg, you always want the um the doors to be locked and this car does not lock them for you so that's one of the other sucky things and then lastly it's something that you're going to notice on a hot day because when you're driving and you stop um, normally in a normal car the aircon will keep pumping cold air but in this car when the car stops and the auto stop kicks in and the engine turns off the aircon stops blowing cold air it's now blowing out room temperature air into a hot car and you can feel it instantaneously and I'm not sure why, because in my opinion, you need to have the battery that's keeping things running, but it's not. And now you've got hot air and you're getting uncomfortable and you want to pull off and it's not a time. Yeah, so for me, it's going to be the heads up display, the drive off car, the car locking when you drive off and then the air con that gets warm. But otherwise, it's a really great car. And if you're in the market for a Suzuki Grand Vitara just like this, uh, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. Uh, they're a website that sells new and used cars and they're approved by all the automotive manufacturers as well. And the great thing about Change Cars is they're also a one-stop shop for everything automotive. So you can sell your car there, you can buy a new car, you can see if you can afford a car. That's actually quite a cool feature. So you can actually go in there, put all your financial info, It'll tell you what you can afford per month and it'll even show you what car options out there that you should look at. And the most important thing for Change Cars is their service guaranteed. Now that's the whole reason you're coming to Change Cars is because you're wanting great service from start to finish. 
Now, every single dealership that's listed on their website has gone through a vetting process. So you'll know that whatever dealership you end up working with has been vetted and verified. So you're only gonna get the best service. And they're also a proud partner of Greg Dennis Reviews. And now for the verdict in the form of the GDR test. Not Greg Dennis Reviews, although very similar, but should you get the car, should you go drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now for me, I would say, go and get the car, but more specifically, the GLX version. So that's gonna be the top spec. I wouldn't spend the extra money to go and get this all grip hybrid model. Um, yes, it does have some off-road features, which are great, and yes, it does have the hybrid technology, but in my opinion, I don't think it's worth the extra money. I would rather go and get the GLX. You're getting all the other high-tech features in here. You're getting all of the, the added coolness. You're getting the full leather interior, the panoramic sunroof, the big display, leather steering wheel, 360 camera, um, and you're probably gonna get better fuel consumption too because you don't have the heavier car to have to lug around. So in my opinion, and I would recommend that you go and get the GLX version of the Suzuki Grand Vitara. Thanks for watching another Greg Dennis review. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Suzuki Grand Vitara and I was able to make your purchasing decisions a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, if you did enjoy this, please really drop a like below and subscribe if you wanna see more car related content like this. I do reviews and other cool stuff. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.